If you ever wanted to grow your YouTube channel to 10,000 subs or more, you're gonna love this episode. I interviewed Clark Kegley and his YouTube channel, Refuse to Settle, has been grown from scratch organically from zero to more than 250,000 subscribers. So he's gonna give us some powerful tactics and strategies that we can implement ourselves. Enjoy. Welcome to High End Client Acquisition Podcast. My name is Marian, I'm your host, and this show is here to teach you how to attract your dream clients on autopilot in 30 days or less. Each week, I bring you a guest or a strategy that can help you take your business to the next level. Don't forget, you can always get the episodes in your inbox or messenger at clientacquisitionpodcast.com. Clark, my man, first of all, I want to say thank you so much for joining me today. It's It's been a while since I tried to connect with you. Like it was, you know, the Funnel Hacking Live and we didn't get a chance to meet there. But then I always wanted to kind of share your story with my audience because I do believe that you have something amazing that you've built. The, well, actually, we'll get into questions uh, just in a second here. But give us your version of the story in a nutshell like everybody and of course my audience that was not familiar with you before they heard about you in the intro of course but tell us your version uh in a couple you know in a couple minutes here like how did you get started on youtube why did you know and and where is all that coming from just so yeah. we know exactly what we uh what we look at yeah thanks for having me on first off man i'm excited today and you got that nice little branded backdrop we were talking about before the call um uh, man, it's it's been a roller coaster, and so for anyone who's thinking about starting a YouTube channel, like you know, it might be a little overwhelming. You're like, I follow these YouTubers, videos seem so overwhelming. There's all this editing, there's all this tech, there's all this camera stuff. I feel like of any other platform, like Instagram's really simple, right? Because it's photos, and you can kind of understand it. Facebook, it's pretty simple. Twitter, but like YouTube seems to have kind of the most like overwhelm I find when I work with clients and stuff. So that was what it was for me. I was like, I'm so overwhelmed. Why don't I just start? So I just kind of started putting out videos. And then literally, man, it wasn't until like 300 videos, it's kind of embarrassing to say, that I finally figured it out. And I was like, okay, I know how to make a good video. But my videos back then when I first started, it wasn't professional. It was terrible quality camera. And it was me shirtless playing a drum cover to Paramore. It was like the, the weirdest video you could ever post. I thought I was going to be like this fitness guy playing shirtless drum covers. <laughs> and I think like my mom and my girlfriend at the time were watching it. Um, and that actually comes full circle later, which is crazy, like how things turn around. And then so I started another channel that was all about self-development and, you know, trying to figure it out and find the niche. And then it finally started clicking and I got my first 10,000 subscribers, which is a huge milestone for people. Because if you can get that first 10K subs, man, the momentum's there, everything's there, people are watching, it's easy to rank, all the stuff we'll talk about later. And then I just went all in. I said, hey, here's 10,000 subscribers, maybe there's something here. So now it's almost at a quarter million um, at the time of recording and like I haven't even run paid ads. I haven't ran like a single dollar of successful paid advertising to it. So it's all organic, um, 100%, that's how I built a multi-six business. Going to seven this year with help from guys like yourself and some ads guys because I haven't figured that out yet. That's like the other half, um, which is really exciting. But I, I guess the main thing for people like you just start and you never know what's going to happen from it. So, you know, that shirtless drum cover I posted, man, um, actually eight years later, someone hit me up saying they needed a drummer and they saw that video. Are you available? So that's how I got another gig of like touring in a band. At like full time. So it's kind of like one part YouTube, one part bands, man. And it's just like, I'm still getting chills talking about because it it's just for everyone listening right now, like there's so much possibility with YouTube. It's insane. And every con every piece of content you put out, it's like almost immortal on like Instagram, on like Facebook, on like Twitter, on like email that has like that short shelf life, right? Like YouTube videos, they take on a life of their own, which might sound corny, but like, that's why I'm passionate about it, man. And uh, that's kind of the story in a nutshell. Awesome, man. I love it. But you you mentioned something there that I was not aware. I was always under the impression that you started in the band and then you started as a YouTuber. But then the band found you through a YouTube video. So that's insane because yeah. you know, you've done something because you have, you know, you have the band as your main gig and then the YouTube uh, brand. It's kind of, you know, of course they relate. 
but you've built it on the side and, and like you just mentioned in here right like it's a multi six figure business going towards the seven figures so which which is crazy right so let's let's think about that like why back then why did you decide to put that you that video on youtube with you playing the drums like why you didn't just put it on facebook like why you didn't put it on vime or whatever it was back then yeah i guess that related most to youtube um that's what i watched and so i think that people like if they're listening to this if you know advice i've gotten from my coaches and mentors is like there's so many options out there right it's overwhelming which one do you choose and they can each be their full-time gig and you got gurus like you know uh, name names but you know people at the top screaming be everywhere and like for me of course like i'm up front i'm not the most end-all be-all successful entrepreneur out there but at least like i make a full-time living i can do whatever i want i can wake up whenever i have all this freedom which is like the real goal right and that's not braggadocious that's like why people are listening it's like they want that freedom and so like you can be everywhere but then you have no freedom you know what i mean and like it's easy for them to say it when they have a team of 20 people running all their micro content and all that so for you you know I chose YouTube because that's what I resonated with the most. And I, I saw it as like, I saw the writing on the walls. It was like, videos have a long shelf life. You do the work once and then it pays you in subscribers, in organic reach, in content, in email signups, in niche branding. If you make the right video, it's like almost every little video is almost like its own sales letter or its own, I don't even know, like its own brand, its own video asset is kind of the word I use to describe it. Just like people, they invest in real estate, right? Like you can invest in videos and if they rank and they keep bringing in customers like that's you only need like one or two of those videos to get hundreds of email signups that you can monetize or to get thousands of people on your eyeballs so like you don't need the 300 videos like i did if if you listen to shows like yours and other and you know marketing and most youtubers suck at marketing man i'm sorry if i'm going on a rant but like dude marketers make the money that's the number one thing like if I could go back and tell myself, like, I was just a broke YouTuber and most YouTubers are broke. I was reading 93% don't even make 17K a year on the ads. Like, that's wow. such a shitty way. Can I cuss on here? That's such, a, yeah. <laughs> that's such a terrible way to monetize a channel. That's the low hanging fruit. Like, you're not on YouTube for ads. You're not on YouTube for money. You're on YouTube for the organic reach and then you monetize off using the, the strategies you talk about. And man, it's it's such an exciting place to be. So I don't know if that answers the question, but like I, I just I get fired up. No, it does, man. And I and I love the way that you break things up for people to understand because you know that the monetizing part, um, it's one of the you know latest questions, but it's important to to know there are like multiple streams of income and you know a lot of people don't know that you can make money even if you just have maybe a thousand subscribers or two yeah. three thousand and you can still if you know how to you know position it in a way but i'll let you talk about that so one of the the questions that a lot of people would have so for example in our audience we have coaches uh in different industries right like health coaches or or fitness coaches uh, or, or sales trainers and things like, and, and people like that. And they think like, all right, how, like, why would I start the YouTube channel when I can, um, just run paid ads on, on Facebook? That was one of the questions that, um, I got, I think probably about a week ago, cause we were talking about a new challenge that uh, I'm putting together and it was all focused towards YouTube. Um, and then I answered in, in my way, but then I want to hear your answer why should someone start their youtube channel and how they should structure their content if they already have a business for example yeah i mean what are their goals are they is it to make even more money is it brand is it like a challenge like what what's the main goal that the that was my that was my question to them and then of course um their first question was well can i just get webinar signups can i get and of course you know the paid side it's of course that i know how to answer but in terms of organic reach yeah um i was like well if you build the content around the problems that you solve and then you you do your research before to make sure that that content is actually searchable all yeah. of a sudden you can make a huge impact because people can find you through organic and then you just put some money behind and of course the yeah, I think, um, yeah, I think the reach of it, I mean, it, that seems like a question of kind of the ROI, right? Like how much is my time worth like filming videos and stuff? So, so I, I was I, trying to explain like, 
organic, you got to look at it like at least a year, two years, three years down the line, because that can, as opposed to like Facebook or, or Instagram, if you're not paying to for the content to be seen, I mean, it goes down in the next couple of minutes or hours and you're done. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody yeah. sees that anymore. Yeah, that's a great point too, man. Um, I think it's funny, like, you know, modeling success, everyone knows on this channel, like just model after successful people of where you want to be. And like, if you look at the big players, like the kingpins in marketing, you know, you probably know them off the top of your head, but like, let's just say the 10 biggest people and you kind of look at where they're focusing and doubling down on, for me, what I've seen is YouTube, you know, like they're, they're putting all this energy and time into their YouTube videos and it's like a real viable thing. And, um, it seems like a lot of people are coming here from the paid ad side as well. You know, like everyone's advertising on YouTube's, you refresh your browser and you see a new guy selling a Amazon course, like every single day, you're just like, ah, another one of these, you know what I mean? Like my entire, every single time I watch a video, man, I'm just like, so give me 60 seconds. I'm going to show you. I'm like, okay, all right, here we go again. You know? So I think like from both ends of it, like not only do you have the top entrepreneurs coming to YouTube, but you have like the paid side too. It's kind of like some, some between the lines reading, I guess, like there might not be a clear, concise way to sum that up, but it's like, everybody is, it's got this new buzz I'm sensing in 2019 or whenever people are listening to this. So it's like, it's kind of like a second wind, you know, like five years ago, people were talking about YouTube because it was new. And then all this other stuff started going to Facebook ads. And now it, it's, I don't know if you sense this too, but I sense like, it's kind of heating up, like the water's boiling right now. And people are like kind of huddling around YouTube. No, that's, that's exactly like one of the, one of the reasons that I wanted you on the podcast was this, like, Everybody looking at Facebook's latest change of algorithms and change of terms and conditions and policies and ads, you know, costs going up and things yeah. like that. And the, plat the ad platform going to a place where it's almost, you know, it's that just back to back uh, type of uh, you either bid more or you have a strategy in place or if not, you just got to go and, and, uh, and find a different ad platform. So. I just got the feeling that a lot of people are just looking at YouTube now because it's a whole different monster to be to be honest because you have so many other places that you can advertise like I'm talking from a direct response uh, thing is when you can put your ads in front of or on big channels right like for example I'm gonna just say right now like I interview now you and then I can run this interview on your channel as yep. long as you allow ads on your on your channel right yep. so of course i can get views on the videos from a paid perspective but you've done it organically yeah. so i was i was wondering like do you have some specific tips for people that let's say somebody's starting out now right they have a business and they want now to build their channel maybe around the business or maybe around a passion whatever they decide is there like a blueprint from your perspective to say, all right, if you would do, and of course we all know that we have to provide value and we all know that we have to do, you know, a decent quality videos at the beginning. And then of course, cause you have, you compete with all the big players in the game, right? Like if somebody's yeah. just starting out, they're competing with you. You have, yeah. you know, quarter of a million subscribers. How, how would you recommend somebody would go about the strategy? And then of course we'll get into tactic in the next question, but what's what the strategy should be around their channel when they first starting out? And then let's say their road to the first thousand subscribers. Okay. Yeah, this is perfect, man. Cause I was actually just talking to a, a client I have. I do some more like higher end coaching for people who have probably 10,000 subscribers and looking to get bigger. There's a few people who have zero and they're just looking to get their first thousand. So like the first thing I always do, um, and it might be different cause your audience probably already has a brand like their coaches and whatnot. And they're more established. So they're starting further ahead, which is great. The first thing you need to do, in my opinion, is really not think about what you want to talk about, but think about what other people want to hear. And so that's finding like proven content on YouTube. Because the biggest mistake I made early on was the me, 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 I, I, I syndrome. You know, it was like, it was like, here's what I'm passionate about. And like life is, you know, about finding your passion, guys. And it's like, oh, no one wants to hear rambles on life advice. Like self-development space was just like brutally crowded, man. Like that yeah. is anyway it's a rant for another time so i would say like how do you find what people actually want on this platform so you're not wasting your time and you're making the most of it um and that is to find channels 
that are kind of in your niche and model after them, which I know sounds like something we've already heard before, but it's so simple and there's really no secrets beyond this. You literally find five to 10 model channels that have above 10,000 subscribers. It's gonna depend on, you know, if you're in the health niche, you can probably find 100. Um, yeah. But if you're in like the high ticket sales niche, there's probably only two or three, you know? And so you find these 10 channels with over 10K subs, you go into their videos and YouTube lays out all the data for you. You can just sort by most popular and, and you know, filter out videos that are kind of legacy above 24 months and whatnot. But you find like right there on the first page, it loads their 20, 30 most popular videos. So now you have, you know, potentially 200 videos that you could film that are proven to be valuable to, that you can kind of recreate. And, you know, you add your own flair on it. I always tell clients like, well, Clark, I'm not going to copy videos. You know, I have to be original. I have to, this is organic content. This is like an art form. You know, we're, we're like being creative. And I'm like, dude, it's like, I went out to Thai food last night and I got chicken. And then the other week I went out to, um, freaking chick-fil-a and got a fried sandwich it's still chicken but it's totally different you know what i mean so like someone else's <laughs> the terrible example but it works you know someone else's seasonings and whatnot like on the same meat is totally different than what you're gonna do and so you find what they're doing and now you have 200 videos you put your own flair on them and that's like the fastest way i think that people can get their first thousand subscribers ten thousand and beyond and that's still what i do to this day you know, as I just recreate proven concepts. Now you have what your audience wants, so you know it. But that's like the secret there. And then you just need to do it, which I think most people struggle with the doing part and not actually like the tactical stuff. Uh, most people struggle with the like getting over things like, ah, I hate the way I look on camera, you know, or ah, I get nervous. It's like I can talk fine about this to friends or maybe on a podcast or whatever. But like for some reason, video again, like people they think they have to have this Hollywood film set, which is total garbage, you know what I mean? Like this phone right here films better videos than 20 years ago, a $10,000 camera did, you know what I mean? Like it's amazing now, you can do it in front of a window, like on a white backdrop. Some of the videos I do that have 2.5 million views or whatever, it's literally like just a white backdrop, it's minimal. It's it's nothing, no fancy equipment above two, $300. Like, you, you, you lower the bar, you model after people. And that's, I think, the fastest way to get your first 10,000 subscribers on YouTube. I love it, man. And, and even the fact that he just said that you can just do it with your phone. Like oftentimes, even in the ads, we see that the, the, the ones that we, you know, we shoot with like professional uh, editing and things like that, when you do one with your phone, it just performs better. For Interesting. <laughs> whatever reason, yeah. Like more authentic? Yeah, like I think just people relate to more, you know, to the ones that are just like, I'm talking about direct ads that I, I would just record and say, you know, sign up for this free course or download this or whatever yeah. it is. If it's on the phone, it's just, it's shaky and it's not, my voice is not perfect. It's just, I guess it relates more huh. <laughs> to people yeah. for yeah. whatever reason. So cool. Now you mentioned something in there that I want to um, ask you a, a side question to it. So model somebody else's, like one of your competitors, pick five competitors, you model their best uh, videos and then you do it over there. Now, what's the strategy behind that? Is it for you to rank around the same key phrases that they do and, and around the same um, kind of you know, titles? And of course, you'll have to title it in your own way because you're not gonna be able to beat somebody that has a million subscribers. Um, but what's like, what's the, I know from a content standpoint, of course, it makes sense because you look at the person that did that video or videos and then you model it. But then what's what would be the next step in that process in terms of you making sure that your content gets seen? Is it people just yeah. paying for ads and show the video to? Like, what would yeah, that's a good question. Uh, it's funny, man. I wish I, wish I was more um, strategic than like random, but a lot of YouTube is just flat out luck and hard work, which is like the most unsexy thing I can say, you know, to people who like, because I want tactics too. But one benefit we all have when you start posting these videos, and, and who knows, maybe it's like one out of 20 will catch, right? And like, man, like if that one out of 20 catches, well, for numbers sake, like I have a video that's 2.5 million views. I was just looking at the numbers. That's like, it brought in like 20,000 subscribers just on one video. 
you know? So like you don't have to have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of hit videos, like out of a hundred, maybe you have five that really perform well. And then you just keep kind of keep recreating it. But what one thing I was going to say is YouTube, they give you so much data. It's insane. Um, you know, like I can go into my studio account and see click through rates and watch time and related search. And they just updated that actually this last year. Um, it's a new feature, YouTube studio. And it's, it's like, it's so easy to find. They pretty much tell you all, um, what, sh- what videos you need to film. And so that's really good. If you, if you want to approach it from more of like a paid traffic strategy, right? If you're coming from that frame, like you're more analytical with like clicks and conversions and stuff, you can do it that way. But I've always been the organic guy. So, <laughs> you know, it's a little too above my, uh, my high level right there. Um, so yeah, I wish I had more tactics on like, is it search? Is it suggested? What, I mean, one thing I noticed is suggested content does get like probably 40 to 50% of views. However, like 20% of mine come through search. So just SEO essentially like old school blog SEO really. Um, and so there's, yeah, there's some, there's some tactics with that. Like it's not interesting to really deep dive into, but for people listening, like, you know, keyword and title, um, the shorter your title is, the more weight it has in that keyword. So if you have like 20 words in a title and three of them are your keyword, well, that's less effective than if you had five and three are the, the one there. Of course, tags, they don't really matter, but um, I found that audio is really important. So in the first 30 seconds, say your keyword multiple, multiple times, and that's a good way to get it ranked. Um, in the first paragraph of your description, put your keyword two or three times rephrased in there. And that's pretty much SEO on YouTube in a nutshell. Um, You you can do tags where you're like, you know, let's just say I was going after um, Dan Locke or something, you know, and I'm like, okay, Dan Locke, this is a video related to Dan Locke, high ticket closing or something similar to that to kind of like hopefully maybe get on their sidebar. Um, But YouTube is so advanced now with their algorithm. It's actually more about what you say in the video because it transcribes it all. So every single thing you're saying in your video is searchable now with the captions, as long as you don't stutter and have an accent like I do half the time. Um, you know, so mine is, it's... Mine is worse, so... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. So like, you know, it, it, that's just something to keep in mind too. You know, that first 30 seconds is really the most important part of a video. That's interesting now. I don't know. I think this is the first time that I hear this. So they're actually, um, even if you don't add your uh, transcriptions to the actual video, it will recognize it anyway. So basically the way that you start the video will actually tell YouTube if you're lying in your title or not. Pretty much. Yeah. That's interesting. I, yeah, I didn't know that. And it penalizes I don't know to what extent and some of the stuff is just rumors, but like if I was running YouTube, I would definitely do this, you know, like from a business standpoint, you want honest content. You don't want 2008, like bikini girl thumbnails. And then the video is like a dude in his living room, you know, like it doesn't make any sense. So I think they're really trying to clean it up and go as honest as possible. No, I, uh, I love that. And I think that's important for us. Um, I mean, specifically for me, because my channel is it's small. I still, I got a little bit over a thousand subscribers, but um, recently, probably just like a month ago. So initially I started in 26, 2016, I had like 40 videos on. Mm-hmm. I was just doing videos about the things that I thought my customers would ask me. Yeah. But good. they were like far from, but they were far from behind. Like it was so far away from actually the questions that I was getting when I when I first did a survey and I asked like, what would you guys want to hear? Like what, uh, you know, and everybody was asking the question. I was just talking tactical, but people were asking really, you know, first level questions like, and I was like, oh my God, I was so wrong for a year and a half and I created all these videos. I mean, 40 videos is not 300 as yours, but still, you know, it, it takes, I mean, you know, the, the, the time that it takes to create them all and, yeah. and everything. But yeah, anyway, that was, that's, if I could jump in there, that's one thing I was, um, so I flew up or drove up cause I'm in Seattle. So it's not that far to Dan Locke's place. He has like this big mansion. I, do you know Dan Locke? Yeah. I had him on, he was on the podcast too. Yeah. Oh, great. awesome. Yeah. So he showed me his new house. It was like the first weekend he had it. It's like this 14 bedroom immaculate house. I don't know how many millions of dollars in Vancouver, um, like five indoor fireplaces, 1500 bottles of wine. And he doesn't even drink like $100,000 fish tank. I'm walking by. He's like, oh, Clark, this is 
this is very expensive. <laughs> <I'm> like, okay. <laughs> and uh, it's just indoor bowling alley, like insane stuff. And so we were sitting at dinner and I was kind of asking him the same question. Like, how do you kind of decide what to make videos on? Like, that's kind of the most important question you can ask. And he's like, well, Clark, like a lot of your trainings are where you give the tactical advice, the how to. So for example, with high ticket closing, you know, um, which I'm an affiliate for and it's a great course and all that. Um, it's very, it, it's a lot of tactical stuff like do this, not this. Here's what you say when a client does this. It's a great course. But like the content, if you notice what he does, it's more high level, right? It's more uh, not a negative word, but beginner. It's more palatable for people to get them in the door. And so I think that's such a huge takeaway that I've incorporated. And uh, I think if, you know, to your audience who are coaches and it's easy and fun for us to geek out on like the marketing tactics and email automations, but like that's so advanced that the people on YouTube right now, like they're just think of them as like very beginner, like level one, level two, which you're like, do people really need a video on how to set up and create a ClickFunnels account? You know, but like people make millions of dollars doing screen share tutorials on that exact thing. You know what I mean? It's crazy. So like, I, I think going basic at first and like giving kind of the high level tip of the iceberg and then the other 90% behind your paywall, um, you're still giving awesome info, but that was a big reframe for me. And it is right now for me, like, to be honest, because, yeah. you know, oftentimes I just think like, all right, people want to hear how they can retarget stuff. But a lot of people maybe don't know what retargeting is. Yes. And then I first need to lead them with just content that they were hoping to just search, right? So like I said, literally just a month or three weeks ago, I actually started to really look at, right, let's look, I, you can, I look, I uh, use a, a tool called um, Keywords Everywhere, I think. Yeah. Keywords. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And it, it, yeah. And gives me the volume. And then I create my videos around different, you know, different phrases that are in my niche or what I think, you know, customers of mine would look for. Yeah. So that's a great one. I mean, if you're talking tools, I think that tool is cool. Um, VidIQ is another one. I don't yeah. really use that too much. It's a little too much info I've found. Uh, TubeBuddy is the other one, TubeBuddy. And that's just a phenomenal tool. I use it. Um, it kind of uses YouTube search and summarizes it. And then honestly, like the YouTube search bar is great. This is a huge game changer if people are just new to YouTube and like SEO and stuff. If you just type in like the first two letters or I'm sorry, two words of your keyword um, and let YouTube kind of auto complete it and just see what comes up. Those are all the videos that people are actually searching for because it's completing your sentence. So I know your audience loves tactical stuff. Um, so that's no, one this thing. Is a great tactic. This is a great tactic. <laughs> yeah. So like, what's a video you've done in the past that you're like, okay, I know um, people like that. How can you get more, uh, how to get more coaching clients? I think that was one of the latest. Okay. So if you, it, uh, that's a little longer because I'm, I'm assuming that whole thing is like a searchable phrase. Yeah. So if you just type that in the search bar, I'm sure other things populate after that. And then each one of those is like a new hit video you can film. So it might be how to get more coaching clients for entrepreneurs or, you know, for fitness professionals, for consultants, for whatever, whatever it auto populates right there. Those are all different videos. Now, of course, if you're not in that niche, it wouldn't make sense. But like, you know, for me, if I do that on like, um, uh, how to get your first 10,000 subscribers on YouTube, it'll say fast or without, um, a blog or uh, without showing your face is another one or like how to film a video um, on ScreenFlow, on an iPhone, on a PC, all the all this stuff that we wouldn't think about. And man, each one of those is like its own separate content. I love it, man. So every, I know exactly what you, um, what you're talking about in terms of just filling out those phrases. So you say, a video of you know at least the first five or ten that are coming up in the in the search yeah yeah Populates. got it okay definitely awesome. and then the the other tool i'm sure your audience has heard of or maybe they haven't but it's buzz sumo you yeah. know that that site that's a great one i find things on um those are more like blog headlines right which is different than like a youtube search and it's funny my friend who's like humongous marketing geek and like he's phenomenal dude is crushing it runs like three agencies 
like Facebook agency, funnel agency, like all this stuff. He's just crushing it. He's jumping from space soon. Um, he's like half the time he was doing this live stream and on there, he was telling me that, uh, you like use improper English with your titles because YouTube, it like almost doesn't care how it's phrased. And even when your brain's reading it, you know, the ands, buts, thes, best, like all that stuff, throw it out. So like how to get more clients could almost be like get more clients. And then like, again, because what we talked about, like the, the, the more words you have in there, the less weighted they are. So it's like you can almost get away with improper English sometimes with titles. Awesome. And, and would you think it's smarter to go after, you know, because we all want like volume, right? Like we all want the volume of search to be huge. But do you yeah. think it's smarter for a smaller channel like mine or even smaller to go after, let's say, maybe just a couple hundred searches versus a couple of thousands because it'll be harder to rank for those? You yeah, know? I mean, you nailed it. Yeah, I, I, absolutely. What you just said, man, you're, you're spot on. So like, the small channels going after the long tail is how you're going to build it. So I, I also inject here. Um, one thing I did that was the first thing that really helped my channel take off and get those first 10,000 subscribers was trying to anchor myself to somebody else who was bigger. And the way I did that, cause I'm like, well, I can't really interview people cause I have nothing. Like how am I, what, who am I going to interview? You know, like the guy with anyway, you know, uh, so that didn't work. And so I went after their books, their book summaries. And so I'm like, you know what? I'll go to Amazon right now and see what the top 20 business books are. And I just literally wrote them down, ordered them all, read them, found the 10 best ideas and summarized them in a video. And some of those videos, they got hundreds of thousands, half a million views um, at Funnel Hacking Live. The people who like came up, came up to me, which was really weird because, you know, we film all isolated. So you forget that people are actually watching and real people sometimes. They're like, dude, I saw your book summaries. Like, that's always the thing that people talk about. And so anchoring yourself to somebody bigger. And so here's another little secret that I'm actually doing right now because I did the top 20 books, so I can't really do them anymore. So I'm going after entrepreneurs now. So if I can't interview someone, if they're too busy or whatever, now I'll do Tony Robbins' best five ideas and summarize those. So now you're getting Tony Robbins' audience searching for him but to you and you're, you're providing value and you're giving to them and you're saving them time and you're giving just banger content. And now they're associating you with that bigger entrepreneur right there. So I don't know if that applies to um, coaches and consultants really, but that's something that I've done and it's worked in the past and it's probably going to work uh, now. No, that's super smart because what you just said in there, like it's the same thing as you. I tied this up with your um with your first strategy that you just gave pick up five to ten uh you know your biggest competitors biggest channels and then um focus on their videos but then if what if those five to ten uh channels also have books like now you also combine these two and all of a sudden yeah. you have a, a huge strategy so i hope everybody's taking notes because this is some real powerful uh, strategy in here so you mentioned something in there before I uh, before I asked you about the monetizing part. You said 70% of the videos most of the times come from suggested and 30% let's say, let's say uh, come from search, right? We nailed, or you nailed actually the, the search part. How can you go after suggested videos? How can you influence at least a little bit YouTube to actually, to actually suggest your video into somebody else's channel? Like how, is that a, can you do that other than paid? Um, yeah, man, I, I, don't, I honestly don't know. Um, I've yet to crack that code. I think it's kind of tough to do like this, uh, you know, this result will happen if I do X, Y, and Z. The closest thing I know is to just model similar videos. I mean, YouTube does give you, uh, if you, once you have these videos, they give you all this data. So it's great if you want to look into it, if you're a data nerd, right? And you're very analytical with the stuff, which is not me. Like I, I suck at data. So that's why I have a, a guy who's going to run my ads. And like, I don't like looking at a Facebook ads manager just gives me a heart attack. Like even looking at my YouTube analytics, I'm like, I don't want to know, you know, but like, I love the creative side of it. So, um, but if you're a data person, which you'll make a lot of money if you are off guys like me who don't want to do it, but like you can go into your YouTube analytics and they give you a breakdown of where your suggested videos are coming from. So for my viral videos with like millions of views, 
I can see exactly what percentage of traffic is coming from those. And so I'm like, okay, if they're getting 3% of my traffics for this video is coming off of this video and it's phrased a little differently or it's similar, what if I create that exact same video? And so you can reverse engineer it once you have data, but you, you can't really do anything until you have data other than the model channels we spoke about, if that makes sense. No, it does. It does a lot of uh, it does a lot of sense because obviously, and especially the the strategy with the book that that one I love uh, a yeah. lot because um, once you do that and then you mention the name of the author and all that stuff and then of course the first thirty seconds if you're smart to mention that part then the yeah. rest of course might tie up your video t towards the author's content so that's that's smart. Yeah, and I want to say like, man, because uh, I know you're great with ads, right? And like you love paid traffic and I'm sure a lot of people love paid traffic. Like I'm so jealous of you because you have such an advantage on YouTube now because like I don't do paid traffic, but I flew down to interview my friend, uh, Matt, who's in Phoenix. He does like 2.5 mil uh, drop shipping a month or he's had months to do that. I don't know if he does it every month, um, but like crazy, it's all paid traffic, right? And he's starting a YouTube channel organically. And I'm like, Matt, why are you starting a YouTube channel, man? Kind of to the point you were speaking about earlier. Like if you're already doing paid stuff, like why start organic stuff? And he was telling me, man, like, cause you don't understand, like it's not about the organic reach of millions and millions of views. It's all about the retargeting. That's the only reason I'm doing it. And so once you get people who are subscribed to your channel, like everybody knows I'm preaching to the choir, it's so much cheaper to convert them through retargeting and you're kind of doing the hardest part organically. And then you can just come in and kind of scrape more cream off the top and your ad rates are gonna go down. You know, all this stuff is gonna get cheaper and you're gonna make more money in the end because you're doing the organic stuff of the warm up instead of just going after this cold traffic, which is like really expensive. I burned like 10K trying to do that, which was stupid. But um, you, you know what I mean? Like you just retarget them. No, it's, it's, um, it's really important. And I love the fact that you actually mentioned that. So that gets me to the next question, right? Because we, we really got super tactical and, um, and, I, and I love that. But somebody starting out, they put in, let's say 10, 20 videos or let's say four videos a month, right? Like let's, let's have that as a goal because it took me a little bit to understand how to batch produce content to be able yeah. to just do it in one day, you know, schedule it in advance. Um, now I have somebody that's editing my videos, but somebody that's just starting out, they're doing, let's say the goal four videos a month. How and what they can do to start thinking of, all right, how am I able to monetize these so I'm not just waiting for the millions of views for AdSense. Because a lot of people, I think they get trapped. And Dan Lark shared this, um, I think about a month ago or two months ago when I talked to him before the Final Hacking Live. It's, it's like 10 others that you can make more money than just waiting for the AdSense. Because it takes so much, like you probably know, it takes so much time to get those millions of views and they have to be consistent in a, <laughs> in a way for you to actually get a check every month. What, what do you think um, it's a good strategy for somebody that's, that's just starting out? Yeah, there's a lot to say there. I mean, AdSense is great, but I always say it's like a tip jar. You know, it's like if you have a street musician, where are they gonna make most of their money? Like the people putting in a dollar? Well, it's probably the people buying their CDs. You know, so it's kind of like that open guitar case is what AdSense is. And then what you have as an entrepreneur who's already further ahead than most YouTubers because you're coming in from a marketing standpoint and like you're just going to scrape clean everybody up if you have marketing behind you. Um, if marketing first and then you go into YouTube, that's, such, that's a way more like, you know, funnels and email automation and all this stuff like you're going to clean up with YouTube because again, 97% of YouTubers just bank on ads and they just go after like 17K a year and they're like, hey, this is a nice, you know, side income. Um, but how do you make a full-time income from it, you know? So for me, you know, as a digital marketer, it's all classic funnels and email automation and courses, really, and selling people courses related to what the videos are. Um, so that's where I make a lot of the money on the back end is through courses. Um, the only goal with ads, in my opinion, is like to break even on your YouTube content. So a given month, like just for transparency and numbers for people, if they're curious, I think around 2018, 2019, it was got to like four to $5,000 a month on ads, which is like, that's decent. You know, that can pay rent, that could car payment, pay off loans, whatever. 
I'm sure people listening wouldn't complain if they had an extra four or five grand in profit. I'll take a month. Four, ta- four extra four or five K a month every time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's great. It's and awesome. Then, yeah, it was, it was it was fantastic. But I, I, I recently hired a team of seven people to pretty much run my entire YouTube channel. So like now I record a video, I upload it to a Google Drive or whatever, and then I tell them exactly what to do on like a Trello flow. And this is again more tactical and advanced, but I know your audience likes it. Um, and, and then the whole thing is kind of done and I'm the high level stuff kind of orchestrating it, but all the tactical in the trenches they're doing. So that four to five grand goes now, instead of me taking it and pocketing it or investing it, it just goes to pay them so we can put out lots more content and then the back ends where you're making the money. So it's like front end YouTube, getting people in and breaking even. And then the back end, kind of like a free book funnel, you know? Exactly. No, I I love that. So just to kind of break it up from there, you advise people to basically structure their YouTube channel, of course, their products and their services, right? Like to make yeah. sure that they tied up that into making sure that send the subscribers back to their funnels into their own. Yeah. I mean, think about it. Like if, if you're a coach right now watching this or listening to this, and I don't know, give me a number. Like, what do you think all your coaches sell their packages for? Like, what's a pretty standard so let's rate? Let's say uh, one of our recent um, clients, let's say twenty-five dollars to $3,000 um, on like a two-month contract type of thing. Okay, great. So yeah, three grand is like one client. You know, like, and you make a video that gets 10 leads and you get to close maybe one or two of them. It, you know, that all of a sudden is like a $6,000 video right there. So it's like the ROI for if you're selling higher ticket stuff or niche stuff on YouTube, like you don't even need thousands of subscribers. You don't even need thousands of views. You could have a hundred views on a video and it's actually better if you have a hundred views on a video of the right people. than if you have a hundred thousand views of like a Logan Paul video, you know what I mean? So it's, it's like not about the masses. It's about like the right people. And I wish I knew that sooner on because uh, my channel is actually very broad. And that's another thing I'll say is if you're, if you're like, well, should I, we talked about the tip of the iceberg and going broad, but like YouTube these days kind of penalizes channels that cover too many topics because it doesn't know where to feature you. Um, it doesn't know, okay, who's he related to? He's doing self-development and then book summaries and sales. And it's just too confusing. And so that's been one of my weaknesses, just to be honest, is like, we don't want to get pigeonholed in one topic, but like, that's what YouTube wants. They want you to be this one trick pony, like over and over creating the same style video. Um, so I have friends who are, who've flown past me just because they like, I'm only talking about finances. Like every day it's all about finances. So stocks, entrepreneur finances, sales, but it all relates to just finances and money. And they don't have any self development or book summaries and they just crush it in a year's time. Cause they're so niche. And that's really what YouTube wants now. That's interesting. The, what you just said now, I know Evan Carmichael, I'm pretty sure mm. you're familiar. Yeah. He just broke down his channel into like eight different channels. Yeah. So like the videos that are just with him are on his personal channel. And then the other videos are just on, you know, different type of um, other like niche specific for each uh, person that he was, you know, modeling about just one second awesome and i love it you uh you literally blew my mind with uh, everything that you share with us today so if somebody wants to learn more about the way that you teach the whole youtube strategy because i mean people will just hear what you just said they'll take a lot of notes down but of course in one hour we can only share so much where they can go to find out more about all your trainings or or other things that you have yeah, if they're serious, just shoot me a DM on Instagram, just coaching. And my Instagram is just Clark Kegley. And we'll make sure, of course, we'll put the link in the show notes and description of this episode. And is Instagram your favorite spot now in terms of communication with... with communication, our- yeah. YouTube, it just gets too messy with the comments. But if they want on YouTube, just search my name, Clark Kegley, um, and come on over, subscribe. It'd be awesome. Before I let you go, what's your thought on people that just debate between IG and YouTube? Because I know these two now, like with IGTV now, with a vertical long form video, a lot of people would say like, oh, why should I focus on YouTube? Because IGTV is new and it's going to feature me more because they want more content. What's your thought on that? 
yeah, I mean, test both and see what works and what's more natural for you. Um, I personally am all in on YouTube. So it just for my mental space, I can't really, I have to say no to a lot of things, right? Because my coach, he told me I'm in this mastermind, it's like 25K. Um, he's like, Clark, you don't get ahead on business in life by your yeses. You get ahead by your nose so you can focus. And I was like, speaking of blowing minds, I was like, oh my God, that's so good. So like, there's always going to be things popping up here and there. And like, for me, my one thing is YouTube. So I just mentally, you know, I kind of say no to other stuff unless it's like obvious and I'm open to it. But Instagram's great for like, I, I love it for fun and connecting with people and stuff, but I don't really try to grow it as big as it can get because it just takes its own like team to run or its own strategies. Love it, man. And even just that alone, and I love that I asked you that question, just that thing alone, because now I'm thinking, right, like you are um, at a quarter million subscribers on YouTube. And when I asked you that question, I almost thought you're going to say, well, yeah, that's my next step. I'm uh, now I grew to this point on YouTube. I'm good. I'm going to grow now my Instagram. But you said no. So that's that's super important for everybody that's listening. And also for me personally, because, you know, we all get into this uh, trap of wanting to to do so many things at once. But just that alone, it's a, it's an advice that can save a lot of time and, and make a lot of money for, for everybody, including Definitely. Me. Yeah, it's like catching two rabbits and you don't catch either. I tried to outsource Instagram and maybe I did it wrong, but like I had a fan and I hired a guy who was just creating like a brand account with like 60 second clips and the text and everything. And it just like wasn't performing. So I'm, I'm like, why is my energy getting diverted to here? Even the mental space it takes up, you know, it's like having two children, three children or whatever. Like I'm sure I'm not a dad, but I'm sure like the mental capacity is like kind of overwhelming, you know? So like just having this one thing, one focus, I find peace in that and simplicity. Love it, man. Again, really appreciate you um, coming on and, and sharing all that knowledge with us. And we'll make sure we'll list all the, um, your handle. And by the way, do you have um, anything available for people to watch now? Like any trainings that you put out there uh, recently where they can go to watch that if they want? Yeah, if they're serious um, about like taking their YouTube channel to the next level. So I do coaching for people who have over 10,000 subscribers and they really want to monetize it or get to 100. But that first zero to 10,000, we cover it all in a course I have, uh, Video Breakthrough Academy, which you'll link down below. Um, and that's just a course that literally is like the roadmap to get your first 10,000 subscribers on YouTube. We go into not just tactical stuff, but we go into branding, positioning, you know, finding like a blue ocean in such a crowded space, um, how to monetize using the eight best ways to monetize, growth tools, all the gear you would need. Like it's not a film school. You don't need a film degree, but most people, they see a camera, they're like, I've never used this in my life. You know, so we walk over the basics in that and then some advanced stuff as well. Um, if you do want to be more hands-on, you want to edit, great, we got all that stuff. If you want to outsource it, great, we got all that stuff, how to do that too. So it's very much like the comprehensive guide to getting your first 10K subs. Uh, yeah, they won't have any questions after that. Awesome, and love it. So we'll make sure we'll link up all those, um, the course and also your Instagram for people to make sure uh, they can check that out again. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it. And yeah, man. we'll definitely link up again. At yeah. Funnel Hacking Live. In, yeah. In next Funnel Hacking days. Live. We got to go, uh, go out for drinks or something. Of course, man. Again, thanks a lot, man. You bet, man. All right, guys. I hope you enjoyed this episode. I know I did. And I have a lot of work to do to implement all the tactics and strategies that we got from Clark. And regardless of the level that your YouTube channel is at now, you can be, you know, under a thousand subs, under 10,000 subs, or you can be, you know, close to a hundred thousand, whatever it is. I guarantee that if you implement at least one of the strategies or tactics that he shared with us, you can make a dent or, you know, you can make a pretty big impact so also if you want to check out all the resources courses and links that clark mentioned make sure you check out the description of this podcast episode and don't forget hit that subscribe button leave a review and you automatically enter in our weekly giveaway where you can get books coaching vip q a with the guest and a bunch of other cool stuff until the next week and by the way next week we're going to have pat flynn so you better check out the episode take care 
Hey podcast listeners, I want you to know that I really appreciate your attention and I don't take it lightly. That's why each month we pick a lucky winner and we give away books, mentorship, software, courses, iPads, and other cool stuff. The way to enter is go to clientacquisitionpodcast.com and sign up. You'll get all the details there. Talk to you guys soon. Take care.